Good morning and welcome to St. Francis Community of Faith for All People, an inclusive Catholic faith community where all are welcome. Today we are celebrating the seventh Sunday of Easter, and this is the last weekend in which we will be closing out our Easter celebration. Next weekend, we will be celebrating Pentecost, which is the official closing of the Easter season. Want to wish all of you a happy Mother's Day, no matter what capacity you are in, happy Mother's Day. And may you be blessed with God's strength as you care for those who have been entrusted to you, your children, your pets, and those who rely on you. And so let us start with our opening song. What's that? Can't hear it? Can't hear it. I don't know what just happened to me here. Okay. <laughs> okay. We must have had a, a new setting that was put on Zoom, so I apologize for that. There's usually a share buttons on the bottom, but it wasn't there. So we'll probably not have music today, I apologize. So let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. And also with you. Let us call to mind now the times that we have not been as faithful as we should have to the Lord and ask Lord for his mercy. For the times, Lord, that we have lost sight of the fact that you have consecrated us through our baptism to be signs of your love in the world, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For the times, Lord, that we have failed to see your loving presence in all of creation, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For the times, Lord, that we have not spent as much time with you in our personal prayer and communal prayer, where we find strength to live out the mission of your universal love, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, King Almighty, Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only child of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of Lamb. God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of our sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace. And I absolve you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, reaching from the end to the end of the universe and ordering all things with the almighty arm. For you, time is the unfolding of truth that already is, the unveiling of beauty that is yet to be. Your son has saved us in history by rising from the dead so that transcending time he might free us from death. May his presence among us lead to the visions of unlimited truth and unfold the beauty of your love. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. There was a group of about 120 persons in the one place. He said, my brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time, the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed to Judas, called Bar Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of in this apostolic ministry, from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the 11 apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, the Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord, the Lord has set his set throne, throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord has set his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord, the Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you, all you, his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The, the Lord, Lord has set his throne in heaven. heaven. The second reading is taken from the first letter of John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. 
we have come to know and to believe in the love of in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 My friends, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them so that they also may be consecrated in truth. My friends, the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of our liturgy, we are ending our Easter season, 50 days post-Easter. It seems like it went by in a flash. And the church does that by celebrating Pentecost as the closing of the Easter season. It's often easy for us to lose sight of the historical effects of what happened in the church. We think that Jesus was around 50 days, but in actuality, a lot of the things that we celebrate, the resurrection and the ascension, happen very quickly between, you know, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, and then maybe a week or two from what we can gather, there was the ascension. But the most important part of what we're celebrating as we prepare for Pentecost Sunday is this word consecration. What does that mean? We could very easily lose sight as Christians, non-ordained folks, to believe that only those who are ordained priest, deacon, and bishop are the consecrated ones, the holy ones. And that's really not what Jesus is talking about. The consecration that Jesus is talking about is a commitment. Jesus called the disciples to him, and the disciples in turn went out to be the good news to others. We lose sight of the fact sometimes that this message of universal love that Jesus lived and preached was something that was new. It was a new understanding of God, that God dwelled in all creation. It was a new understanding of God, that God was calling all people to be one. Because maybe we were baptized as infants and because this mission has been going on for over 2,000 years, we can lose sight of the uniqueness and the newness 
of this message. And what happens when we lose sight of something that is new, it becomes, we become complacent. We take it for granted. We don't really get excited anymore. It's like the child who gets a new gift around the holiday season. All of a sudden, the child is very, very excited. And then what happens? That toy gets tossed in the toy bin or in the closet or maybe even in the garbage because there was lost interest in it. Jesus is praying to the Father for the disciples for two reasons. One, he knew that the world which rejected that message of unity and universal love would come down hard on the disciples. And because the disciples were just beginning to establish their own relationship with this new understanding of God that Jesus presented, they were infants, they were toddlers, and they didn't have the concepts or the experience that Jesus had had for 33 years. They were brand new to this. And so Jesus knew that as human nature, some would wane when things got tough, when their faith was tested, when they were rejected, when they were cursed at, when they were thrown out of towns, or when they were imprisoned because of the gospel. When we think of that early church, that early experience, where would we have been in that time? We had had an encounter with Jesus that changed our life, and now he's gone. And all that are left are each other, the beginnings of faith communities. Faith communities are so very, very important because this little gathering today, and maybe, maybe a couple hundred people watching this later, we know we get strength from one another. That our faith is not just an isolative personal faith. That's dangerous because we could create our own image of God in a personal way and lose sight of the community. Jesus came to form a community of people, of disciples, of apostles, of later in history Christians, to continue this message, to be recognizing that through baptism we are consecrated. Same oil that's used at ordination was used on us as infants. To be consecrated priest, prophet, and king. To be that witness of love in the world. We know in our own society, our state, our country, our world, how disruptive things are. How there is so much hatred for anyone who's different for anyone who has a different opinion, somehow or other, some people believe that they have the truth. And that's an idol. That's an idol we must be very, very careful of because truth is something that evolves over time. No religion, no political party has the absolute truth. Truth is made up of everybody's understanding, whether Christian or not, whether Republican or Democrat or not, it doesn't matter. Truth is something we are all striving for to the day we transition. That's what Jesus is talking about today. He prays for those consecrated, for those that have been chosen for this holy mission of love. And he also prays knowing that the evil one, those who distract people from love, those who offer instant gratification, things to fill that void in us, those things are sinful. Why are they sinful? Because they distract us from God. They distract us from loving people. There is no greater understanding of what this gospel in Jesus' life is about in my own life than the mother who I had. My mother was a, a beautiful woman. Yeah, she was a, a feisty little Italian lady. And when she got angry, she got angry. And when she loved, she loved. But one of the things that she taught me was dedication. That no matter what, she would always say, 
Her, her devotion was to both St. Francis and to the Holy Family. And she would say, I'm not always there to protect you. But when you get afraid, when things are not going right, just listen for the donkey hooves, the donkey that brought Mary to the end, and know that God is there with you. Know that God is within you. And she loved St. Francis because she loved the poor. We were not rich, but whatever little we had around the holidays, she would make cookies for all the poor children in this particular group that she came to know, I don't know how, but she came to know them. And she truly lived her Franciscan life. She was a third order Franciscan. And her life showed me not only faith, faith in church, no, she lived her faith. That's what she taught me, that if you truly believe in God, act it. Don't talk about it. Don't spend hours in rituals, do something. And that's what Jesus is challenging us today. If you really believe in the resurrected Lord, do something, act, act in love and act in love even when you don't want to. Act in love when people come after you. Act in love when everybody else is not loving. Act in love to that group, that person, that community, that country that nobody cares for. Jesus is about love, a universal love. And the kingdom of universal love will come about, we we'll call it the end of the world, when we all begin to love one another. Not for any personal gain, but because it's the right thing to do. Praise be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone wants to share any thoughts about how God is working in their life or from thoughts about the readings, please feel free to do so. Boy, Bishop Ken, was today's message so relevant to where we are in these times, huh? Um, it's, um, I had never realized how organized a group the apostles were after uh, Jesus was killed, um, that they were looking for another member, you know, that right. they had lost Judas and it was time to get somebody else on board. I, you know, the, the thing we always, the thing that was always emphasized is that they were fearful and they hid and they were afraid and they did, you know, but they were organized and they knew their, their task was to get out into the world and to, to preach and to spread the word. Um, so that, that was new to me and very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, truth, truth is these days uh, um, being attacked, I guess. I don't know what the word is. Um, and I don't think we have to worry about the end of the world much because we're not loving one another as, uh, but the Chris, we Christians are those of us who are faithful and who are of the, at least of our group, we do love one another. And there's an, a lot of it around that we have to remember. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so thank you. I don't know if I made any sense, but no, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. You bring up the organization of the of the disciples. And and yes, they were because they knew that they had this very special message to go out and they did it in spite of their fear. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how they still maintained what they needed to do in spite of their fear, in spite of being ridiculed. So thank you. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let us now profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we, we believe, believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God, life from light, light true, true God, God from true God, God. begotten, begotten not, made, not made, one, one being, with, being the with the Father, through him, him all things were made, for all, for all people, people and for our for salvation. salvation. He came, he came down, down from heaven, heaven. and by, and the, by power the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit he, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became one like us. Like us. For, for our sake, he, he was crucified he, under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered, Pilate died, died, and was buried. Was buried. On, On the third day, he rose again, again in, in fulfillment of the scriptures. scriptures. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven, into heaven and, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will He's come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. Have no end. We, believe we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, life who, who proceeds to the, the Father and the Son, and, Son, and with, with the Father and the Son, and Son He's worshipped and glorified. And and he, he has, has spoken through the prophets. The prophets. We, we believe, believe in one in holy Catholic and apostolic Church. Church. We, we acknowledge, acknowledge one baptism the for the forgiveness, the forgiveness of, sins. of sins. We look we for the resurrection, the resurrection of the dead, of the dead and, and the life of the world, the world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. Okay. The prayers of the people. The response will be, strengthen us, O Lord. For all the faith communities that, empowered by the Spirit, we may faithfully give witness to the gospel and continue Christ's mission of bringing hope and healing to all, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, us, O Lord. Lord. For a spirit of evangelization, that we may allow the Spirit to work through our words, deeds, and relationships to draw others to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, us, O Lord. Lord. For the grace of wisdom and knowledge, that our hearts may be enlightened and our hope made firm in the divine, who has called us to continue the mission of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, O Lord. Lord. For all nations and their leaders, that the reign of peace and justice of Christ the King, Christ the King, may inspire all who lead and govern to recognize the dignity of each person and promote the common good and social justice, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. <clears throat> For greater unity amongst all communities of faith, that we, that we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, us, O Lord. Lord. For all who work to bring food to our tables, especially the migrant farmers, that the Spirit will bless them with seasonable weather and a bountiful harvest and just wages. We pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, O Lord. Lord. For the unmasking of all forms of racism, that the Lord will help us recognize the variety of forms which discrimination takes and give us the courage to defeat it, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, us, O Lord. Lord. For the gift of peace, that the reign of Christ will open new opportunities for dialogue and inspire them to work for justice and the preservation of life in war-torn areas of Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, and Russia, we pray to the Lord. Strengthen, Strengthen us, us O Lord. Lord. For all who are on our prayer list and have asked for our prayers of strength and comfort, especially Nemencio, Caitlin, April, Reverend John Trebiner and his family, Mary Jane, Patty, Jan, Gloria, Angela, 
Kristen, Dawn, Marjorie, Camilla, Thomas Anderley Sr. and their family, Danielle, Chandra, Julie, Chris, Riley, and Scott. We pray to the Lord. Strengthen us, O Lord. And for what else should we pray? I'd like to pray a, a prayer and thanksgiving um, for Lee's uh, niece's new baby. Um, that the Lord has blessed them after they had a very significant loss last year. We pray to the Lord. Lord strengthen us, oh Lord. Lord. Lord God, we offer you our prayers and petitions, those mentioned aloud and those in the silence of our hearts. We ask you to give us the strength that we need to continue your mission of love. And we ask you to strengthen those who are in need, those who are praying for healing and those who are need comfort during this time of their transition or the transition of their loved ones. We ask you this, Lord, in the Spirit's name, a spirit of peace, of hope, of love, and of joy. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite everyone who's either watching live or will watch this later to gather some bread and some wine or grape juice and as I bless our gifts today in the Eucharistic prayers, that we will be able to receive, so will you be able to receive the Eucharist, which is the source and summit of our strength as a Christian community. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving and almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all God's church. Lord, accept the prayers and gifts we offer in faith and love. May this Eucharist bring us to your glory. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is it right is to give them thanks and praise. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. The Lord Jesus, the King of glory, the conqueror of sin and death, ascended to heaven while the angels sang his praises. Christ, the mediator between God and humanity, judge of the world and Lord of all, has passed beyond our sight, not to abandon us, but to be our hope. Christ is the beginning the head of all faith communities. Where he has gone, we hope to follow. The joy of the resurrection and ascension renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. <clears throat> holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, might, heaven and, and earth, earth are full of your Lord. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts and make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread, gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim this great mystery of our faith. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity with the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your faith communities throughout the world. Make us grow in love and unity with all religious leaders, all the clergy, and all those who minister in your faith communities. Lord, remember our moms whom you have called from this life. In baptism, they with Christ, they are with Christ. May he share his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus the Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Gathering all of our prayers into one, let us now say the prayer which Jesus has taught us. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy I will be done, done on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as, we as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, for the kingdom power, and glory are yours, now, now and forever. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our faults, but on the faith of your people gathered here before you this morning, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. And also with you. Let us offer now each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. My friends, let us behold the Lamb of God. Let us behold Jesus Christ who has consecrated us in faith to be his loving presence in the world. May this Eucharist give us the strength that we need. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Savior, hear us, and through this holy mystery, give us hope that the glory you have given Christ will be given to us, his body, for he is the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing of the Mass, just a quick announcement that next week, we will be celebrating Mass on Saturday at 5 p.m. Um, it's the Feast of the Pentecost, so we will be having a live Mass at our location in 1845, Wantor Avenue, Wantor, New York. We are able, through the Wantor Memorial Congregational Church, we are able to rent space uh, at least on a monthly basis. We're trying to do it more. Um, to be able to go and celebrate and have others who live in the area come and join with us. If you want more information, please go to our website, www.cfali.net. Okay. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Father, Help your people to rejoice in the mystery of redemption and to win his reward. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us and be with us forever. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go now to love and to serve the Lord by loving one another. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone. And if you can, we'll see you next Saturday at 5 p.m. Happy Mother's Day, Happy everybody. Mother's Day to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.